Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I am super excited to bring one of our rock star agents. <clears throat> is here with us, and uh, Chris is going to tell us all about himself. He is a brilliant agent and a very hardworking one. He does an amazing job for his clients, and I've known him for about five years. Right, Chris? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Roxanne was actually uh, one of the original, um, actually my first offer I've written up with Roxanne and stuff. So it's been, our relationship has been definitely a while. So... So I've been I've been after Chris for many many years to have him join Pemberley Realty and now we have the fortune of having him as part of our amazing group of strong agents who do a great job for the, their clients. So welcome Chris. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm very um very blessed to not just be here today but also to be with Pemberley Realty. Okay, well, tell us, tell us a little bit about uh, Chris. Where, where did you get your real estate uh, um, career started, and why, why real estate? Yeah, honestly, it was uh, very funny because real estate was um, actually dropped on my lap. Um, it wasn't very intentional. I thought I was going to be like a, a financial advisor because I was a finance major or a um, a stockbroker. One of those was the the choice, but. Um, I was uh, prior to military. I was in the Marine Corps for four years. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've been in real estate for come <clears throat> upcoming for five years. And the way I got into real estate was um, once I got out of the military, um, I was going to school full time, but I just didn't want to just, you know, sit on my butt, just go to full um, school full time. So I wanted to work. And I saw like an ad on um, on Craigslist that said <laughs> veterans for real estate and um I reached out to my my original old broker, uh, my first um, um, brokerage, and um, we uh, I applied for the position, and then he told me that I wasn't fit for the position, <laughs> so I didn't get the job. But he told me to to um, I should uh, get into real estate, uh, get my license, which I was like very hesitant to do it because like um, I never did any sales, I never um, I didn't expect myself to get into sales, and uh, but he he was willing to pay for uh, my my license and everything else. And I was like, you know what, <laughs> if this guy's willing to invest into me, I guess yeah. I should run that, right? So my MLS and my license was um, paid for. And then um, uh, that's how I really got into real estate. So it was a really a stroke of luck, um, intentionally, in, you know. That is that is really, really amazing. And how, what did you, what got you into the Marine Corps? Um. So, and I knew that school was definitely not for me because I was barely on the borderline graduating. <laughs> I had like a like a probably a D or C on the um on the uh, the grade to like pass it and everything. And my brother was into the in the Navy and stuff. And then um, I said, well, he's a very, in my opinion, a very intelligent person and very successful for um for human beings. So I was like, why wouldn't why would I put myself in debt? So. I consider the, the Marine Corps. Now, branch wise, it was also <laughs> a stroke of luck because um, I got um, for test taking, I got very low scores for they're called the military's um, testing. It's like the SAT, it's called the ASVAB and all that. And I was originally supposed to go into the Navy, but then um, I couldn't get like a high enough sc score, but which was great. It ended up working out because I, I feel like personally myself, knowing what I know now, the Marine Corps was like my personality. I needed the Marine Corps. And, um, and so it ended up working out uh, exactly how I planned, well, unintentionally planned. And and I know, I know uh, as the broker and, uh, you, you know, mentoring many, many agents, I see that that training really comes in as, uh, as, as an asset for you. But how do you apply the training that you got through the Marine Corps to your real estate business now? I would 100% say it's the only, it's like probably the main reason why I, um, I feel like I'm doing the how well I'm doing right now. It's because um, the military um, really teaches you traits to honestly just be like a good human, a good hard worker. And like for one is they have the, um, um, 
example is always figuring things out, um, adapt, overcome. So especially in real estate, is we get hit with a lot of weird stuff um, out of nowhere. And it's your um, capability to learn to adapt, overcome over, under very high pressure. Um, organization, discipline, um, we, uh, we wake up at very early in the morning. So like for me was, you know, the waking up early is not very that much difficult. Mm -hmm. um, time management is a big asset that us uh, realtors need because we get, mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of tasks, a lot of um, things that we need to get done and, on our plate and we have to very stick to the times of um, getting that accomplished. And, and uh, how, did, how did you transfer the time management skills from, from being in the Marines to selling real estate? How does that, uh, how does that translate over? Yeah, that's a, <clears throat> that's a very good, great, uh, great question. So, um, for example, that um, something that's always, in my opinion, biggest thing that at all realtors need to do is prospect. That's probably mm -hmm. the number one thing. That it's more important in my, uh, what I think is over everything. Um, some might say like the the appointment appointment of course is a very important, but prospecting is um it's very important. Now that time block of uh, when you prospect, you should be you know, that shouldn't interrupt you and everything. And the Marine Corps taught me like uh, when you have a time in slot in your, your plate, that, that's it. They're like, you know, that you cannot break it and stuff. So mm -hmm. if you need to be at work at like, uh, for me, it's eight o'clock and that's the time to prospect. I need to be at work at eight o'clock, you know, and uh, when, when I'm done with prospecting at 12 o'clock, that's when I'm done and stuff. Now, of course, being as a realtor, things change all the time. A client might hit you up and say, like, hey, I want to see an appointment. That's where the, the military comes in and say adapt, overcome. It's because, of course, you can't, depending how urgent that appointment is, um, you need to make a self-judgment call of saying, like, do I prospect or do I go on this appointment and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, that's for time management why, like, the Marine Corps really taught me um, implement into real estate to be so disciplined. Yes, 100%. Tell us about your uh, your client base. How um, does uh, what your what does your client base look like? So 90% of all my clients are uh, are VA, uh, military. Um, just because one I like to work with them because we just have that that instant connection. We have that culture. So I'm not going to lie, the culture I miss a lot when um when I got out of the Marine Corps, you know. There's things that um, it's just very hard to say or want to talk about and to think about when you haven't went through the experience. But so 90 percent is all uh, veterans um, and 90 a good amount of my business is um, from SOIs and uh, referrals and past clients. So and and uh, referrals and past clients, um, I was actually seeing a video on Instagram, which by the way, uh, Chris is an amazing uh, Instagram videographer. Um, and I saw, I saw, um, I saw an Instagram post on one of, uh, from one of your past clients and uh, they were, they were basically compliment, complimenting you on how uh, you were responsive and how you took uh, great care of them. Um, so tell us about tell us about your work ethics. Tell us about how you service your clients and and what makes you a better realtor out there. And why should people uh, work with you? So I think like the biggest mistake uh, when uh, people go come into real estate is the you know they're they're focused on the wrong things and stuff. If you get into uh, like whether it's you know the monies and the you know the cars and like I feel like the 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 Netflix, Netflix show Selling Sunset gives a big perception of what a realtor is, but if you really just focus on really helping out your clients of like really uh, they have like a you know a problem that you're just really trying to solve it, um, that's why like when I'm working with a lot of my military clients, they move from like uh, they're called PCSing, meaning they're moving from one station to um, currently where we are. Um, that organization and really trying to believe in helping them out of saying like, man, these guys need to find a home within this time frame. Uh, I feel like that you, when you have that, that much uh, belief in like really heart into real estate, uh, not only one, it will last you uh, longer into real estate, but two, it will actually um, 
you know, your your parents or your clients really know and feel um, mm -hmm. that they care that they really you really care about like the biggest transaction of their life, not just being like another um, commission transaction or like just uh, they feel like another number and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're what I tell I tell a lot of my clients, I'm not here just to be that one and one and done realtor. You know, it's uh, when I'm done, you won't hear from me again. I'm here to be, you know, the lifetime realtor that hopefully I'll, I'll be doing real estate with you within like when I'm like. 60 if i'm you know still around by that time and stuff but um that's what i feel like the clients really feel um when you you, you really just genuinely care about their situation right exactly exactly so um so um as a young realtor uh what are what are some of the things that that you've learned you've learned throughout this process that um that basically makes you makes you stronger makes you uh, uh you know well-rounded so that you can service your clients better um sounds very cliche and very um very uh, said upon very true is but uh, it's always like really bettering yourself um you know uh what you did in the past Yes, you should um, uh, enjoy it. You know, the past is something definitely to enjoy and um, feel very proud of. But you also, there has to be a time that, you know, it, past was in the past and that you have to always look forward to, towards the future. Meaning, um, when I say like that, when it's like you're closing a home, like whatever, what I did in the past, like if I close like five homes, 10 homes, all right, that's in the past. But you also have to look forward. How can I be better and mm -hmm. stuff? Like I said, it sounds very... You know, a lot of people, great people to say that, but it, 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 once you get to that, um, once you like, first of all, I never think I, I thought I was going to do the amount of business I did like right now or amount of, I would say my success. I, when I first got into real estate and my, um, our old mentor of mine said like, do you ever think you can like close one deal or <laughs> close 10, 10 deals in a month? And I looked at him, I was like, honestly, I can't, uh, I, I, I couldn't believe it. But then, um now i can understand and that was just because like i always wanted to like to do better every single day and all that how could i serve my clients better how can i make my systems better probably the systems is the biggest one so so that uh, that now takes us to to what you just said now you do have uh multiple transactions all at the same time so how do you how do you manage the workflow? How do you man juggle uh, between everything and uh, without going insane? Um, that, that's definitely a good. Um, definitely, um, don't be afraid for help. You know, because when I was like, when I was before, I was holding like um, a certain amount of transactions. I've had like a big ego of saying like, I can handle it and everything else. Um, you know, this is whether. You, you want to the biggest thing i always think is that you want to keep your sanity you know whether if you hold like five transactions if you're going insane it's not in my opinion not worth it and i learned through that if you're holding like that amount of transaction so it's better to you know either share what part of your 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 your, your wealth with everybody else and then you're, you're able to give your clients a good service and holding that transaction in the scene than trying to just keep all the um the 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 fees together, your your own fees or your earnings together is because you you think you can do it. So uh, definitely whatever help you have, always reach out to say, like, I need help instead of uh, trying to um, handle, manage everything uh, through yourself. And um, past learning, you know, if you did it once, you can do it again. So whatever you did before, like uh, when we carry this amount of transaction uh, per time, um, mm -hmm. don't stop um don't stop them. Just don't freeze and do your um, um, candles this transaction. Always like call, keep on reaching out to other people that needs help and stuff. So past learning experiences definitely helped me throughout the, the years. So uh, tell us, tell us how you see the market and uh, especially in San Diego. What's your, uh, I don't want to say uh, predictions, but but tell us what uh, what you know and how uh, you perceive the market moving forward. So I think San Diego, 
you know, it kind of sounds biased, but because I live here and all that, but it's um very uh, one of the best and um, healthiest um healthy and for real estate. And the reason being is I get a lot of questions from my my military clients is like, um, you know, am I gonna have a hard time buying? Am I have a hard time selling and this stuff? And I, I don't ever think you're gonna ever ever have a hard time selling is because we have five major stations here. Mm -hmm. uh, we got 32nd Street, we got Coronado, we got MCRD, which is um, the first two are Navy bases, major, major um, Navy bases. We have um, Miramar, and then we got Camp Pendleton, and uh, we also have the Coast Guard um, station. So regardless, if we talk about moving in, um, moving in and moving out, San Diego, you're, you're, you're always going to have military. It's not because they want to move. It's because they have to move. They have every four years, it's part of the contract that they have to move and stuff. Now, right now, I think it is the best time, in my opinion, to uh, it gives the opportunity to buy. Yes, interest rates are not as what two percent where it was and all that, but it's at like a pretty decent rate for um pretty decent uh, interest rate that a lot of people are able to buy because mm -hmm. when we're in the market of twenty twenty of uh and twenty twenty, uh at the end of twenty twenty one. Everybody was overbidding, you know, uh, interest rates were good, but it was very hard for people to um, either purchase a, a home and stuff. So uh, I think in, I think uh, I don't want to, like you said, to make a prediction because I know I'm not like a fortune teller. But if right now, if interest rates go low, it's going to be very, um, very also healthy for the, the clients as well. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with you. And, and I also agree that for as many years uh, that as I have been in the business, I have never felt like San Diego was a bad place to uh, to invest in, buy or sell uh, or invest in. And I have never even felt like real estate was a bad investment. Granted, in 2017, we had a free fall. Uh, 2007, we had a free fall, but that was short lived. And almost everybody that lost value in real estate in those days, they have gained gained over that and then some. Yeah, I see it as firsthand, a uh, firsthand witness of why um, firsthand witness and seeing a whole bunch of um, my clients, you know, I had clients that I told them they're at the very end of a closing on a transaction and they, they wanted to pull the plug. Uh, I pulled the plug and I told him, listen, man, like, cause uh, like I said, 90% of my, my clients are military. I said, mm -hmm. there's only two ways of your, 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 your BEH, um, basic allowance housings are going to go either hundred percent to, uh, to a landlord or back into your home where you can do your asset. Mm -hmm. And now towards the end, like this was actually recently towards the end, he's not fighting me about selling. He's fighting me how much money he's going to make, which um, he made a good amount. Like my clients made a good amount, but th that's exactly what I want though. I, wa I want you to fight me about how much money you want to make within a span of one year, two years or three years or whatever you want to keep your real estate and all that. But um, th th especially you know, with military clients, because they're basically getting in with zero money down. Right. So it's, 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 a win -win. The best, it's literally the best investment. It's literally the best investment. I can tell you firsthand as being a military person, we don't make a lot of money while we're in. We're on a base salary. So the only way you're going to make more money is you're going to have to get promoted, which can take years and stuff. So, you know, whether you're making, you know, if one of my militaries are seeing like uh, uh, ROI of like 40, 90 or 100 uh, plus uh, in, um, you know, equity, not only that the money that they built up uh, through appreciation, but also the money they, they probably would have gave away to a landlord. Now, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not saying that, you know, buying is 100% always the case. Like you, it's, you have to buy 100% because maybe there are times that clients are just not in the position to buy, you know, that, which is all right, you know. But eventually, if you have a game plan towards um, that goal of purchasing or um, purchasing, I always feel like it's, you know, you can't go wrong. I totally, totally agree. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you for thank you for your service. Thank you for continuing to be in a service um, mindset and service industry, and uh, you know, having the servant uh, mindset and and also being in that uh, in that mode of uh, servicing clients. And um, if 
if somebody was thinking of working with Chris, what would you say is your most important value and asset that you offer a client? Um, man, that's a good one because I don't really, I don't usually don't think about myself like that, you know. Uh, I would just uh, say like, you know, uh, I know I under I feel. I, and I know, you know, genuinely feel and know that this is your biggest investment. So, like, my biggest thing, what I always tell all my clients is my biggest concern is your experience. Because, you know, if you have a great experience, what are you going to do? You're going to, you know, you're going to tell all your friends and family and, uh, and everything. And I want us to have not just, a, like I said, a one and done relationship. I want to have a long term relationship. So just know that, you know, if you do end up working with me, I'm just not here for the just for that one time here for the, the rest of my life. So you'll always have me for the rest of your life, whether if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Well, um, thank you, Chris, for joining us today. If you are, if you are uh, thinking of working with Chris, you can find him on his cell phone, which is uh, right on the screen. And you can also find him uh, via his email address, and he is very active on Instagram. And here is his Instagram handle. And, uh, and Chris, thank you very much. Continue to be as amazing as you are. And we appreciate you. We appreciate everything you do for, for your clients. And, of course, for being a part of Pemberley Realty. And, uh, well. and audience, Thank you for joining us today. And, uh, and if you liked uh, our video, we appreciate that you give us a thumbs up. If you have any, com uh, any comments or questions, please list them be below. And, uh, and we always appreciate your referrals. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Have a good one.